Well, welcome back to Sorebox and our journey through Psalm 37, We're looking at the wicked when they prosper. And today he talks specifically about wicked people who plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them and how God laughs at the wicked because he sees that their day is coming. You know, not only do we see at times the wicked prosper, but if we're living for Jesus, we can expect the wicked to plot schemes against us and to treat us with a hate and anger for which we've done nothing to deserve simply because we follow Christ. Christ is light and light exposes darkness. Perhaps you've experienced this before as I have. We saw it with Madeline Murray on hair in the debate. She was angry at Bob and Christians simply for sharing their faith. Just a downright hatred for Christianity and everything it represents. It's nothing new. Here in Psalm 37 we see the wicked plotting against the righteous gnashing their teeth and we know that it comes from Satan himself. But notice here that God doesn't promise to stop every plot against us, nor keep us from ever being affected by the plots of the wicked. It doesn't mean, however, that he's indifferent or uninvolved. If you remember Judas, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus, secretly went to the Jewish leaders and plotted against our Lord. Well, Jesus knew what was going on. He knew about the wicked plot against him, yet he allowed it. Even though it was wicked, it was evil, it was unjust, it was brutal, God would allow this plot to succeed as part of his ultimate plan to redeem mankind. Je Jesus sent Judas away at the table with his disciples, and Judas, Judas went and betrayed Jesus. Jesus knew what was going on, but he didn't rant and rave about how unfair it was, how innocent he was. He simply stayed close to the Father in prayer and showed us how to endure horrible injustice when it's all part of God's plan. Now, nobody wants to go through it. There's nothing fun or exciting about being plotted against or being wronged. And there are times that God will step in and intervene, but there are times where he will not. Sometimes we may understand why God allows it. More often, we may not. Sometimes, when it's all said and done, we can see how God has used us in our lives and in the lives of others. Other times, we remain puzzled and unsure of what God could have what good could have possibly come from it. The key for us isn't that we see and understand and can explain everything, because none of us can. The key is that we continue to believe that God is in control no matter what, and that he has a plan and will, as Romans says, work all things together for good to those who love him, to those who are the called according to his purpose, and God keeps his word. If we lose sight of this, eventually the plot of the wicked will cause us to lose heart, to become discouraged, worried or angry. Sometimes we feel as though God owes us an answer for everything, and we have a difficult time accepting the fact that he doesn't and will not answer all of our questions in this life. Most likely, you and I wouldn't be able to handle his answers anyway if he told us. Can you fully explain to your two-year-old child why he or she has to take a nap or go to a bed at a certain time? Well, you may try and they may obey, but they cannot grasp all of the reasons and understand everything we as adults can. God is the creator of all things. He knows all things. He upholds all things. He is in every place. We are limited, finite, fallen creatures who cannot possibly understand everything about God nor all of his ways. Why does he do this or that? You know, uh, so we must, absolutely must, walk by faith. But it's not faith, just blind faith. Uh, it's faith in who our God is, that he is holy, that he is good, that he is all wise, that he is all loving, he is gracious and merciful, and on and on we could go. The point is that we aren't asked just to have faith in nothing, but to put our faith and trust in a sure thing. God is a sure thing. There's no risk involved with him. The risk is when we don't, when we trust in ourselves, we trust in things, or trust in our circumstances. As the word of God lights our way, Jesus is the living word, and he is sure to keep his word in each and every situation. He already knows the end of all things, the consequences, the judgment, the rewards. What seems like an eternity to us is nothing to God, who is eternal. Now, we can stay focused on the wicked. We can allow things to rock us up and down like a ship caught out at sea in a storm, hopelessly rocked back and forth. Or we can anchor ourselves to the rock, Jesus Christ, and not be moved by the storms that come, but simply hold tighter to the one who loves us, who cares for us, and created us for himself. No matter how scheming and how plotting the wicked may be, they cannot out-manipulate the God of this universe. And he's the one that is in control. Keep that in mind. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow.